day 16, and it's an absolutely wild day. Day 16 of 365 of running Archer, Joby, Vertical Aerospace, Horizon Aircraft, Beta Technologies, every single day. So make sure you smash that subscribe button pretty early on. But yeah, today we've had an insane day, haven't we? Archer Aviation did fail to close above that $9 range, and has been peaking above it for quite a while. Joby Aviation did touch that $16. I was actually hoping we would start climbing above that $16 range. But yeah, we did start dropping back and think it finished round about the 1540s. But there's a lot of positive news around the industry at the moment. We did have Adam yesterday at the White House. We've had Joby pushing out quite a bit of information about how their test program's getting on. But I have something very, very interesting today. So make sure you stick around to the end because this one is actually going to be really exciting. We've got various price targets. We've a bit of a clown. Yeah, let's just get straight into it. You know my absolute love for Motley Fool, don't you? But yeah, we've got Motley Fool's newest recruit, and I think there's some wild things being said, and some of you guys want me to break down the video. He has just put up one within the last five hours, so I've had a look through it, but look, I haven't deep dived it, so I thought there's no better time than just to record it and deep dive through it together. So. Without further ado, let's just jump straight into YouTube. Right, so we're talking about Rick Orford, and to be fair, Rick Orford actually looks quite professional. When I actually jumped into him, he actually looked very professional. I thought he knew quite a bit of what he's on about. And as well, look, to be fair, he has like 58,000 subscribers, so I thought, genuinely, he must be saying something right in order to get this such of a following. But then is this ChatGPT's finest, the Motley Fool. I genuinely think... ChatGPT is being used in Motley Fool. You get one article saying one thing, and you get one article saying another thing, and then, of course, you're going to be right because you're bearish on it and you're positive on it. We will do a few breakdowns of exactly what I mean. But when I then started deep diving into who Rick is, I noticed I did watch some of his videos. But what really started confusing me was a month ago he said it was going to $18. Then. Four months ago, he said it was going to $20. We had another one one month ago, it was $20. But he also said it was going to $18 a month ago. Um, then we had $20, $18, and I think there was a $25 one there three months ago. Rick, my guy, pick a target, stick with it. We don't care whether you're right or wrong. Look, I've said my price target for Archer Aviation. I genuinely think it's $20 at some point this year. I'm not changing on that. If I get beaten on that, or I could change it going forward, but every single month putting a different price tag just on the thumbnail, it doesn't look good, mate. But then I thought, you know what? His content might be quite good. So we will dive into some of the videos. Okay, so we're here at the video and it's Archer could, I'm not gonna say that word because it'll bang me, but 3X. But the one barrier, changes everything. And I haven't gone through the whole video because it actually bored the living daylights out of me. But I can have a bet the one barrier is either going to be FAA certification or it's going to be some type of accident of some sort. Or it could even be the competition will swallow them up. But is that what's going to stop the 3X? I don't know. Let's get straight into this Rick the Marshmallow, we're going to call him. What if the future of short city travel isn't by cars or trains, but electric air taxis flying right over traffic? And what if I told you it's no longer just... Okay, I'm just going to stop the video there. I said I'm not going to be able to run the whole video due to copyright. This introduction, I've probably seen four or five times. Every video he does about Archer Aviation, he does the exact same thing. So we're going to skip straight past the whole introduction there. Um, jumping across to Archer's profile, I did actually go through right this a little bit. So let's start at the beginning. Archer Aviation designs and develops electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, also known as EVTOLs, for use in urban air mobility networks. The company was founded in 2018, and today they're headquartered in... Okay. This is one problem I have. If you're a beginner in Archer Aviation, you will watch a video on being a beginner in Archer Aviation. I just find it frustrating that people can record videos directly from 
Archer Aviation's website and just read it off and try and say they've explained it to you. If you wanted to read Archer Aviation's website, you can do that. But this whole video, you'll see it throughout the video, it's going to be just referring to Archer Aviation's website. And if you want to be analytical about any sort of stock, you don't want to just read one side of it. People say that I am extremely bullish in Archer Aviation, but I will always read the bear cases, I'll read different sources, and I'll just share my own thoughts. This is just like getting AI to just read off the website. We'll see if it gets any better, or I'll just skip to the next bit of the video. In California, its primary focus is on creating zero emission air taxi services and aircraft that offer a quieter and cleaner alternative to traditional helicopters for short urban trips. Okay, when I explain this, I like to just be straight to the point. These are going to take in 30 to 45 minute trips. That would usually take you in the car all the way down to 10 to 15 minutes. The likes of Joby and Archer Aviation, we can more or less put them under the same bucket. Look, they are two different aircrafts, the S4 and the Midnight. But let's get straight into why the stock's going to 3x, because we're already two minutes into this video and I'm starting to get confused while it's about. Looking there, we're still going through making our vision a reality. So I'm going to skip past Archer's profile. Let's go on to recent news. That'll be a little bit more exciting, hopefully. Recently. In December, Archer began partnering with multiple U.S. cities to submit applications under the White House EVTOL Integration Pilot Program. This is a Department of Transportation and FAA initiative that's designed to support the safe launch of early air taxi operations. Well, for you. Okay, so when I talk about the EVTOL Integrated Pilot Program, we have pulled multiple sources on this. Really, the EVTOL Integrated Pilot Program is all about the government making regulations a lot less stringent and working both with the FAA and the companies themselves. This is a testing program, so they'll have five partners, and whether you're Medivac, whether you're Cargo, or whether you're a passenger, it enables you to fly test routes around different allocated cities. And these actually haven't been named yet, but we're expecting hopefully next month to start finding out a little bit more about the whole program i genuinely believe that joby aviation because we've read it in the legislation we can go back to a previous video we done but i genuinely believe joby aviation will be flying piloted passenger flights test flights in the summertime Adam Goldstein very recently ruled it out for Archer Aviation. I think they are more or less doubling down on 2027 passenger flights, but we can sort of try and look forward to the UAE because that is my best hope for any sort of piloted passenger flights for Archer Aviation this year. I'm going to skip through the EIPP program because I think we've banged on about that enough. Then this guy goes through financials, it's reading it straight from the balance sheet, which, look, to be fair, if he wants to go through the financials on the balance sheet, um, that's all right. Growth catalyst, let's go through growth catalyst, even though I genuinely think I've seen this in three or four of his videos. It down, starting with the catalysts that are already outlined in Archer's recent filings. First is the Launch Edition program in Abu Dhabi. This provides an early commercialization pathway outside of the US with aircraft already deployed for testing, demonstrations, and of course, regulatory coordination. It gives Archer an operational foothold and real world. Okay, if you're following the company, you will honestly know that the program in the Middle East is not our main catalyst at the moment. I genuinely think our main catalyst is EV all integrated pilot program being selected for that. I don't know will it do much for the stock. Second up, we have the piloted vertical takeoff and landing transition. That will tell us it's more or less make or break. If we push that out, Joby are just going to accelerate further and further ahead. 
We had Adam yesterday outside the White House, the EEOB building. We believe this is to do with a defensive deal. Any sort of defensive contract will accelerate the stock forward. And just before he put that video up, I never managed to get a screenshot of it because he actually deleted the post. But he put before that, if you know, you know. So genuinely, I think there's a defensive catalyst in there. Then we have the likes of Andrew. We need to find out a little bit more about the hybrid vertical takeoff and landing vehicle that they're developing with Andrew themselves. That will, again, create more revenue, which will help in the commercial operations. Then we can speak about the likes of the UAE in Q3 2026. And then, lastly, we have FAA certification. But I think we can put FAA certification out of our heads at the moment until the likes of Joby knock that off the list. Arch Aviation are nowhere near that. If you compare them to Joby Aviation, we still need to demonstrate the likes of the transition flight with the pilot on board. But, look, as far as the catalyst, we're already halfway through on his catalyst, and he's banged on too much about the Middle East. Risks and red flags, I'm actually excited for this one. Now we do need to talk about what could go wrong. And the biggest risk I see facing Archer Aviation is FAA certification. The company can have strong partnerships, advanced aircraft, and big plans. But without certification, none of it matters. The reality here is that the FAA certification progress can move unpredictably, and Archer doesn't control the timeline. The longer this process takes... Okay, what you're saying there is quite true. FEA certification is more or less make or break for the company, but at the same time, Archer have diversified out quite a bit from just being a commercial air taxi service. They are going for defensive operations. So, again, Adam speaking to the government and hopefully the Department of Defense. We have that partnership with Andrew, not only for the hybrid VTOL, we also have for the Omen drone, the licensing out the powertrain. That same licensing of the powertrain, um, the UK Ministry of Defence are speaking to them about. We then have the likes of the UAE, which he is saying is his major catalyst, but you don't need FAA certification for the UAE. So I think this guy lacks a basic understanding of the company itself. Um, look, I don't hold anything against them for that, but it does seem a little bit scripted, this whole video. And I know, look, at the very start, my videos were very scripted. I like to do everything off the top of my head now. So, look, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I do wear my heart on the sleeve. Do smash that like button if you like us breaking down videos. But yeah, let's get back into this. So that was one of the risks there. What so else has he got? All believe that EVTOLs are safe, affordable, and beneficial. If acceptance or demand falls short, the urban air mobility market probably won't scale, at least not the way investors like us would expect or hope they would. Okay, so market adoption is a risk. I don't think it's as significant as this guy is trying to make out straight after the likes of the FAA. I think Joby Aviation as competition and scaling further and further ahead and the likes of acquiring another manufacturing facility is more of a risk than actual people that will use these. I genuinely think there will be a demand for these and the more and more you get out and the more you cut down the price, I don't think market adoption will be as big of a risk as some people are projecting. Yes, we can say that we don't like change. But at the same time, you're seeing how quick the likes of AI is taken off and people have adapted to change. So it's not like people are going from have never flown before to flying all of a sudden. If these are situated by the likes of airports, what's the difference between you've just came off an airliner and now you're going to get on another one? So I don't actually think it's as much of a risk as this guy is making out. Right, and this is my favourite one when it comes to the Motley Fool themselves. I don't know why, but they never share their own thoughts. They're going to refer back to analysts, their own analysts. 
and they're going to say that is their projection of what's going to happen. A bit of advice for any of you guys, and look, it's not financial advice, but just common sense. A little bit of advice would be don't go following analysts. That is full of market manipulation. Genuinely, these analysts don't know enough about these companies. They probably get a list of companies and they just have to do analysts on each of them and they just stick a price target down. Yes, some of them can be pretty accurate, but look, they're always reiterating their price targets. So I wouldn't ever go verbatim with any of these price targets. But let's have a look at what Marshmallow Head says about it. Archer is clearly a bit of a mixed bag, but my big question is whether the setup supports a long or a strong long-term thesis. And with everything I've covered, is Archer Aviation a buy at these levels? Well, everything you f covered, are you taking the f everything he covered? He covered Archer Aviation's website. I hope by reading Archer Aviation's website you're a bit bullish on the company because if you read anything else, I'd be a little bit more worried. If you're bearish by just reading Archer Aviation's website, well then stay away from the eVTOL industry, put it that way. Consider that according to a consensus among 10 analysts, Archer stock is currently rated a moderate buy, and this rating has remained unchanged over the last three months. The average score sits at about four out of five, although it has edged slightly lower in recent months. The high price target of $18 suggests the stock could about double over the next year from recent levels. Well, I'm actually confused here. Maybe I'm a little bit wrong. He's saying the high is 18. Is that where he's getting his 18 for in the other videos? But he definitely says a 3x, and a 3x is 27. I need to hear more of this. But let's push this further. What would actually need to happen for Archer Aviation to stock to double or triple? Well, a 3x move would put the stock around $27 a share and suggest a market cap of about $16 billion. Now, to justify that valuation, multiple uncertainties would need to be resolved in sequence, not just one positive development. And first and foremost, of course, is FAA certification, which remains the... FAA certification will not get resolved first. We have the vertical takeoff in London. I honestly think we will get a contract with the DOD. We have the announcement of the EIPP, and we're going to have the testing on the EIPP. We have his catalyst, the UAE. So FAA is not happening to the likes of 2027, so I don't know why that is your first major catalyst that has to happen. Are you saying it's not going to 3x until then? And if so, that's a bit pointless to say, isn't it? Because I think any clown could say the stock's going to accelerate once FAA certification happens primary, let's call it, gating factor. After that, Archer is going to need to turn its programs into real-world traction. From a financial perspective, investors are going to need to see losses narrowing and, more important, moving towards operating leverage. In that is the same in any business. I don't know what he's on about, but that is the same with every single business. Is there much more he goes on about? Helpful, do like and subscribe because it helps us. Okay, like and subscribe to this guy. But yeah, let's jump back to the studio and we'll have a little bit of an analysis of this. Am I wrong or is the Motley Fool a bit of a joke? Do smash the like button if you think that guy was a clown. Because look, he tried his best, but he read the website. He just pushed it back and said, analyst. I reckon I could do, look, I do a video a day, so I reckon I could cover many, many stocks and do the exact same thing. Am I jealous? Maybe I am. He has 58,000 subscribers. Do smash that subscribe button, though. But do let me know. Am I wrong in what I'm saying? Am I right in what I'm saying? Do jump into the comments and let me know. But yeah, come back for day 17 at this stage.